Let's face it, with coffee starting at five bucks, yes, with even out any customization options, and our bank accounts somehow always depleting, we are officially entering a dupe session. Most products do the same thing but are priced differently solely based on the brand name. So a good duplicate, or dupe, is crucial for getting the highest quality at the best price. One dupe you definitely shouldn't sleep on, Raycon wireless earbuds. Go to buyraycon.com slash supermega today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash supermega to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash supermega. This spring, you need nutritious, convenient meals to energize you for the warmer, active days and keep you on track to reaching your goals. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and tackle everything on your to-do list. Head to factormeals.com slash super50 and use code super50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code super50 at factormeals.com slash super50 to get 50% off your first box. How much? 50 percent off your first box. Super 50. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another exciting episode of Super Mega Cast. I know you've been waiting all week for it. Well, the time is here, and uh, it's it's Super Mega Cast. That's I- right. Another week has passed, and Matt and I are here once again, as always, to uh, provide you with uh, voices so you can uh, be more productive or be entertained. I feel like uh, people listen to us in the background more than they actively listen or actively watch. Maybe our purpose in life, you ever thought, like, if, if everyone has a purpose, our purpose is just to exist as background noise for people to help them get through their day? I hope we're at least decent. Back- I, I know sometimes we get a little uh, uh, goofy. Silly, yeah. And uh, we scare people. No, 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 get the feather! Luke, you threw in a, uh, a scary sound effect. Yeah, there, I, right? I, you know he did. He threw in a very scary sound right there. People, people say, uh, super mega... I'm driving when I listen to you, and when you put in the big scary sounds, it makes me weave off the road. Potentially getting in an accident, sometimes actually getting in an accident, or people blame us. Which, I don't want to take credit for it because I don't want to, I'm, I'm not going to claim culpability in yeah. something, but if you think that that's what happened, that's hilarious. To the, to the one fan who did drive off the road <laughs> yep. when we put in a jump scare and they broke their arm, uh... Thank With, you. Without accepting any form of responsibility, yeah. I'm just saying I hope that your arm has healed. Pro- that was a while ago. <laughs> I very, I know I, I have nothing to be sorry about. Exactly. No, well, you're sorry that, that I'm happened. sorry that it happened to them. Yeah, it's an unfortunate thing, but but you're not sorry as in you're not claiming responsibility for any of which. Uh, uh, what they tell the you physical damage is uh, apparently if you're ever in any fender bender or car accident, never say you're sorry. Even if, even if it is your fault, just don't don't say it because apparently even just because that's my first go to is if I were to hit someone like oh I'm so sorry but that apparently can be used against you in court and the insurance companies as admitting fault. I say that you should only speak in slurs so they're too embarrassed to tell the police exactly what you said. So what did he say? Ah, uh, he said some bad stuff. Well, he just I needed said a exactly. bunch of slurs. Uh, I mean. Are slurs based on what? Like what word? He was slurring his words. Like what do you mean? Oh, is he drunk? No. <laughs> he said. Luke, do you want to throw in a slur? I don't know. <laughs> what your favorite slur, Luke? There it is, everyone. That's Luke's mine. Is cracker? Slur. Cracker's a great slur. Yeah. Uh, honk it is, is good. It is a slur technically, right? Cracker. Yeah. I Twitch. Believe. Twitch bandit treats yeah. it as one. So. I think cracker's a slur. It hurts me when someone calls me cracker. It, um, it hurts me greatly. You know, my family, uh, you know. My family, you know, my wife, yeah. Oh, okay. Is I that a Borat impression yeah, you're working on? it's a Borat impression. That's awesome. Dude, they mentioned Borat in The Sopranos. What? Yeah. They go, uh, that hit was very nice. He did a gabagool. He goes, very nice. I gotta fucking go back home to my wife. Oh, really? No, uh, the oh, da- okay. the daughter comes in the room to her brother. He's all depressed looking at news about the Afghan Afghanistan war. And she's like, I'm watching Borat downstairs. It, It's the part where he brings his shit to the lady. I could watch it a million times. And the brother's like, it's not fair to the people that were involved. <laughs> What is he? Some sort of like a right wing asshole or whatever? No, actually, the opposite. When he when he in the final season he becomes 
very depressed and uh, mm. start like, becomes obsessed with the with the war the, in George Bush. I just finished Sopranos. Is George Bush in Sopranos? He is. Yeah, there's a part where the brother and his girlfriend are watching a funny compilation of George Bush dancing to some goofy music. Oh, okay. That's um, nice. Yeah, but I, I finished it finally. Congratulations. Or it's been, I watched the whole thing in less than a month, but really fantastic show. Got a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of sad parts, a lot of good parts. The ending. I know the ending is for... You've seen the ending. You haven't seen the show, but you've seen the ending, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people uh, hated it. I loved it. I thought it was a great ending. I think the ending fits. It's a, It's. I don't know. It's not like a... I don't know. People say that it like leaves it open for interpretation. I feel like it does. I'm not going to spoil it, but I feel like it does... To a degree, but not in terms of like to where it comes at the disservice of any character growth or the themes or anything like that. I feel like the ending actually serves the themes of the show. And I know I haven't watched the show. It's like, Ryan, how can you be saying this? Well, it's because I know the ending. Yeah. And I, I knowing about Sopranos, you kind of understand that. I feel like Sopranos... Kind of, uh, I don't know. A lot of shows have that uh, popular thing with it, like Breaking Bad. You're the the uh, criminal with the ha- with not, I guess, the heart of gold, but the criminal you're rooting for, right? So to speak. Yeah. Um. Until maybe uh, you watch it a second time. I don't know if Tony Soprano, like, I'm sure he's a piece of shit. He's a pretty bad guy. But he didn't watch Jane die. No, he didn't watch Jane die. <laughs> uh, People are like you said you weren't gonna spoil. I think. I Sopranos, think, and then you just go and biff on Breaking Bad? Walter White's a worse guy than Tony Soprano for sure. The BB? Yeah. Come on, man. But You're gonna spoil BB for me, bro? Come I, on, bro. I also just finished Better Call Saul. D- yeah? My rewatch. But real quick, uh, David Chase, the, the creator of Sopranos, mm-hmm. said that, because people ask him about the ending, and he's like, if you if you just pay attention to how we wrote it, all, all the clues are there for you to figure out. And I will say, in the second to last episode, the ending scene kind of, Kind of writes out the ending for you. That's my. I know people will debate me in the comments on this. On, on what you can figure out. Well, I don't want to spoil the show, but it's also been out since 1999. Uh, I, I, I could put it like this. Um, the show doesn't have to blatantly show you what it's, uh, what it's going for. My I think. Theor- I think you understand exactly the. The um the tone that the finale and the scene is setting, um, I think most people came to a certain conclusion because, as you said, they set it up earlier, and I can only assume what that means. I I, I know I'm talking a lot of ish for someone who's never watched the show. No, you're spot on though. But you're spot on. Yeah, you fuck is spot on. And I uh, I'll just say people can interpret it as a good ending or a bad ending. I think that the bad ending is the one that okay. Luke, cut real quick. You can only see the our our interpretations and in our and that brief discussion on our Patreon. Unfortunately, we're 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 putting on we're putting that twenty second thirty second clip up. You have to pay five bucks for it. Okay. Specifically, that one, that clip is behind Patreon, but also its own paywall. So that's an extra five bucks. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, great show. And I just finished uh, my first rewatch of Better Call Saul from start to finish. And you know what? The show, I think, is, is, is massively better on a straight full rewatch for the second time. Because uh, I feel like the first time I watched Better Call Saul, I was expecting more because I was used to Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not that Better Call Saul didn't come with punches, but, you know, it was, it tonally, it was different. Yeah. Um, especially, like, the ending and stuff. But I think that on the second rewatch, not having my expectations set to, like, oh, it's going to be as intense as Breaking Bad uh, and stuff like that, you know, I really, really liked it. I really like the ending now. My favorite part of uh, Better Call Saul... Uh, I I could even go back. I, I feel like upon rewatch, I may I might change my mind, but I still think seasons one through three, um, are like my favorite seasons of the whole show. Four and five has have really great episodes, but for me, my my favorite storyline involved Chuck. I love the dynamic between uh the just the brothers. I really like, and not to say that it became a, like worse or bad when uh. When that story, when that story thread is is solved, right? But I don't know. I I, I just I didn't 
con- connect as much with the season four and five stuff. I didn't feel as well. Season four or five becomes more the Breaking Bad universe. Yeah, where seasons one through three are st- almost entirely Better Call Saul's original. Like it's it's about Jimmy's life. And then it starts to get into the, all the Breaking Bad characters. And I like both of them for different reasons. I think the final season's my favorite. Because mm-hmm. uh, I just like the, the way it ends and I like the... I really like the scene on the bus. It's really probably the best scene in the show. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I laughed when I was watching that scene. It's in the final episode. That's like one of the scenes where I'm like, oh no. Hey. Uh, it's Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. Better call Saul. It's a good show, though. I I, I deeply and I liked it more on on my rewatch, and it made more sense because I had never rewatched it. So I had started it in 2014 when it first aired on TV, or 2015. Uh, so back it's like it was would, so spaced out. What would we order? Oh, I started it when I before I moved out to LA. The first episode aired when I was still in college. I, watched, I know that, but I'm saying what would we order when we would watch it? B Dubs, Buffalo Wild Wings. That's right. Wings. Oh. Wings and mozzarella sticks. Uh-huh. And the cheese poppers, or whatever they were. The no cheese hook. curds. The hook was was out of here. <sighs> it was a time gone. You the know? hook lasted like a, a month before, a month or two maybe. I. It's not sustainable. It's not a sustainable habit. It's not. It's not. I mean, maybe if I didn't purchase my own hook and I went socially to hookah bars with some buds, I would be a little more prone to like go, go hook it up. I think I'm hooked out for the rest of my life. Yeah. I could still maybe here and there go, hookah bars are fun, but uh, God, dude, I mean, the thing is, if, if you're not used to nicotine at all and you go to a hookah bar and you rip it, I feel like I feel like hookah bars have a lot of, a lot of puke to clean up. Well, maybe it's good because, you know, you go to a hookah bar, typically they'll serve Mediterranean food, and that's very filling. It's, it's you know, a lot of, like, heavy, heavy meat. There's rice, a lot of bread, that type of shit. Um, unless you get one of their salads. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Luke, censor this out. I'm, I'm, I'm readjusting... I'm readjusting ball... Ball I see. skin. It looked like you were looking directly at my crotch while doing that. Ball skin and so I, tip, and just kind of getting everything. Okay, I'm I'm all good. Sounds like a like a like a legal firm. Ball skin and tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got them in the ball skin and tip. Um, but yeah, I feel like hookah bars got to clean up a lot of puke. I feel like a lot of first timers go and just. <laughs> it is uh overwhelming. But I haven't had, we both haven't, we've talked about this, we haven't had hookah in years. We haven't had hookah since probably 2015. I I remember the last time I had hookah. It was, was in uh, the apartment? No, it was, um, it was, it was one time when I visited home, probably in 2017 you or went, 2016. Oh, I'm gonna, mm. No, some, some, a friend from church, uh, from youth group invited me out, uh, Christian. Invited me out uh, to go to a hookah bar with these 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 twins that we went to church with. These kind of like fratty twins. Like, okay. yeah, we're going to the hookah bar. So I was like, sure. And I went. Um, and that was the last time I had hookah. And I I just remember I was like, this is nasty. This is really gross. That was riveting. And we'll be right back after these ads. Going online without ExpressVPN is like changing while leaving your window wide open. You might not have anything to hide, but why give random creeps a chance to invade your privacy? When you go online without a VPN, internet service providers, or ISPs, can see every single website you visit. They can legally sell this information, without your consent, to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. Yes, you. Feel scared. Be worried. Be extremely worried. When you use ExpressVPN, ISPs cannot see your online activity. I repeat, they cannot see your activity. Your identity is anonymized by a secure VPN server. Your data is also encrypted for maximum protection. Wow! Uh, All you have to do is fire up the app and click one button. You can use it on phones, laptops, even routers, so everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. I know I feel a lot more protected, so those disgusting, greedy little criminal big tech giants can't steal my info and sell it sell it to other stupid little advertisers. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being a pawn. Biden. 
<laughs> Secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash supermega today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash supermega. And you can get an extra three months for free. That's right, Matt, for free. All they have to do is go to expressvpn.com slash supermega. Ah! Berries and cream. Let's face it, with coffee starting at five bucks, yes, with even out any customization options, and our bank accounts somehow always depleting, we are officially entering a dupe session. Most products do the same thing, but are priced differently solely based on the brand name. So a good duplicate, or dupe, is crucial for getting the highest quality at the best price. One dupe you definitely shouldn't sleep on, Raycon, wireless earbuds. So you can listen to what you want, when you want, without breaking the bank. Raycon's mission is to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. You can get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of the other big name tech brands. Raycon knows that in this economy, every purchase needs to be perfect. They offer buy now, pay later options. Right now, you can pay as low as 18 bucks at checkout. They have an easy and free return guarantee. They offer two years of product protection insurance for just a few bucks. And they offer free domestic shipping. I love listening to things with my earbuds. Not just any earbuds, my Raycon wireless earbuds. They're very comfortable. It's it's a nice in-ear fit. Um, I just go around listening to uh, Shania Twain, Britney Spears, my own uh, podcast. Ah, the classics. And here are three specific things I love about these earbuds. They have earbud tap functions, they have noise isolation, and eight hours of playtime. That's very epic. Go to buyraycon.com slash supermega today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash supermega to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash supermega. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Ah, to, a, to another good 20 or so minutes until the ne next ad read, buddy. I'll tell you what, man. Usually diet drinks, you can taste the dietness, but sugar-free Red Bull, it doesn't taste it doesn't have that diet taste, that fake sugar taste, you know? I've never really been one for Red Bull. The first time I tried tried it, I was like, this tastes like medicine. It's strong. I'm a white monster guy, I will say. You are a white monster. <laughs> it's uh what gives Red Red Bull that taste? Wings. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh I think it is in Thailand when I was there, they have it, it it looks like a medicine shot, um. Because I think Red Bull is from Thailand, and it's like, it. I tried it, and it it actually tastes like medicine there. It's like, it might be, it's like a bunch of roots and shit. So, you know exactly what was coming your way when your mom whipped out the clear medicine. Psst. Oh, it, was, it wasn't purple or bubble gum pink. Psst. Honestly. Yeah, the clear medicine was pretty bad, but honestly, I preferred it later on because I was like, I don't like I, I, I. The way I'm gonna describe it is we, there's a better way to explain it, but the way like when something is trying to taste good when it's actually medicine reminds me of when you spray Febreze <laughs> in a bathroom that's just been slaughtered <laughs> with yeah. poop. With well, feces. The, the thing is, it's like the medicine is There's going still that masking, you know. Yeah, and it's gonna taste bad regardless. The medicine. I'd rather just get the bad taste over with. But the the thing is, they mask it with something that also tastes bad. Cherry or grape. That shit. The only decent one, kind of decent, was Motrin, the orange mm -hmm. flavored syrup. But like cherry or grape by itself, those flavors were so nasty, especially cherry. Cher cherry was the was the worst of them all. Great, so if I wouldn't. Prefer I love bubblegum pink stuff. That was probably just Pepto, though. Did you ever get when you were a kid that medicine from the doctor? I don't know if it was antibiotics, but it it, it looked like Pepto and it was bubblegum flavor. Might have been that shit. And it that was stuff. delicious. Yes, that's the okay. That's the stuff. I'm talking but it, about. it came in like a brown bottle mm -hmm. that was kind of a little bit see through. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I I want to know what that shit was because that shit. Give was, me some. I still remember the flavor. Like I can like feel it in my mouth. Do you remember? Uh, <sighs> Something that I don't do, that I wonder if, like, I, I maybe when I turn 40, I'll do it. Maybe 40 is the good stage for Vic, uh, Vic's Vapo Rub. Oh, yeah. So putting that on your chest for a good night's sleep. That's definitely a like, good night's sleep. You mm -hmm. do, that, that's a thing. It's gonna, isn't it used to, like, open up airways? Oh, shit. I got to try that. 
not open up airways, but like it's used for congestion, huh? Yeah, I I know that uh, if you put it like under your nose, you can like breathe or you can't actually breathe better, I think, but it just feels like it because it you can actually feel the air coming up because it, it's that like menthol shit. Yeah. Another thing, dementia. When I was in Thailand, they had that shit just in a stick that you would sniff, and it was awesome. Well, we have something in a bottle we can sniff. That's right, and it's called poppers. Yep. I'd say that, like, uh, it's crazy how much more productive, like, people get worried or whatever, but we, Matt and I have done our research. We're not, we're, we're adults, and I think, you know, getting a recharge sometimes in a Let's Play, you might need, like, five popper hits, take a secret one so people don't, you know, get on my ass, because people are kind of crazy. You and I have been taking poppers for a while, and it's about daily consumption and there have been no difficulties in terms of focus or any like memory problems or anything like that. And I'm, j I guess I'm just stating this cause I've seen a lot of people worry about drug use, popper use and all that. I'm just saying we're just using it for recreational fun, you know? Well, I use it medicinally. I, I self medicate with poppers about 20, 30 times a day. Um, it keeps me, you know, if I don't have poppers, I feel, <sighs> I, I feel like I can't actually feel my own happiness, so it, it helps me that way. For me, it's like I need it to have fun for a Let's Play. So, yeah, I guess that would be considered it's medication. It's, medication. You know, it's very, it's good. You know, I can't really, when I get home from work, I can't experience any emotion unless I use it. So that it, Like the moment you get home, you just need that fucking yeah. hit. Yeah, moment I wake up, it helps me feel some emotion. It helps me, you know, otherwise I'm just numb. And I keep I, some in my glove box just to, like, have if I'm in traffic and stressed. And if you get pulled over and offer it to the cops, say, hey, copper, want a popper? They, they'll they let you go every time. Yeah. You know? And I, and I know, yeah, I've seen a lot of people online concerned about popper usage, that we're, we're addicted to, to drugs. But I'm letting you know we're not addicted. Uh, we just use it uh, throughout the day uh, to get by. Yeah. You know? Little by little. I mean, you need more as you go on. Exactly. But that's just because... Tolerance. Yeah, your tolerance. Stuff. You're becoming stronger in general. Exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, I do the same thing with alcohol. It, it also helps me a lot. But those are nice kicks, man. Thanks, they're new. Are they? Yeah. yeah I was going to say, I, I, I was looking at them earlier. I was like, those are clean, dude. It's my new pair of, I, I get one pair of uh, shoes I, I wear for the year, and this is that pair. It's that time of the year? <clears throat> April yep. 1st, when you get some new shoes? Well, because my other ones are worn out from training, so they have no more support. You really don't notice the loss of support in shoes until you put on a brand new pair. I feel wonderful. I should get some shoes like that, man, because I recently got these 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 new Nike sneakers, and they have zero support. They look Fly, by oh, thanks, the way. Thanks, man. They look very fly. They got zero support. That's the problem, though. Um, and the shoes I was wearing early before this had some custom support that I had put in. And when I put these on, I was like, ow, dude. But now I'm used to them. So if I go back to some support, like, like I got to get some sneakers like that. They're great. I they're, love them. They're stylish. They're these are good. the same, I think, brand that, uh, remember when we were in a... The same shoe size. Yeah. If When we were in a Japan... Oh, the yeah. The first time I had only brought my flip flops to walk around. We were in Shibuya Crossing. And Very I was disrespectful. Still just wearing my flip flops. <laughs> um, and Aaron uh, was like, there's a, there's a shoe store over here. I don't know why I'm making him sound like that. But That's how he talks when yeah. he's off camera. <laughs> I go, there's a sh shoe store over <laughs> there's here. There's a shoe store over here, Ryan. Yeah. And, uh, Come on. You know, these are the same types of shoes I use for Disney World. They get me through the day. And I'm like, and I'm like, that sounds perfect. And so I got myself a pair, and I got myself another pair after that when they worn out. Now this is the third type. I've I've been off of this this particular shoe for about two years, though three years, two years actually, maybe. They're very nice. They look cool. I like them. I uh, I really like um. They help with back too. Oh yeah, I mean, I do a huge the aspect. More support, the better. Yeah, the huge aspect for your back is is your your foot support. Which the doctor told me because I have those fucking bunions. Mm -hmm. He said, as I get older, into my 30s and my 40s, my knees, my hips, my back, my pussy, and my crack, <clears throat> they're all just gonna fucking suck unless I get that surgery soon. Part of me is wondering, should I should I get some back surgery to squeeze, you know, squeak and you know, get shine, right shine my shoes, uh, oil my hinges? Honestly, dude, with the sciatica shit, 
I would just <clears throat> bite the bullet and just fucking get that surgery because I I it how invasive is it? Well, it's on your spine. That's eh, not that big. <laughs> I mean, what do you think the recovery is like though? Do you think it's like probably maybe a few weeks, maybe like a month, month. I'd and say a half it's worth it for the rest of your life though, where you're sore and then. Yeah, I mean, there's just a constant, just kind of like aggravating and you have discomfort. Crazy poppers, all times. poppers around for you. Don't even have to get a prescription medication. Just poppers True. for pain relief. True. Although I would love to get some more opiates because ever since I ran out, I've been a little nuts. Yeah, you have been. So we could probably get you some. Yeah. You know, I prefer though. Um, I think it's just because, you know, I we both own Super Mega. This is both of our office. I think that if I want to take out. Like, if I want my mental illness to impact the workspace, I think I have the full right to do that without any repercussions on my end. As I said, I'm the one who owns the company. Am I? Are you going to fire me? Am I going to fire me? You I don't know? have the option to fire you. Yeah, you exactly. have the option to fire me, technically. But, yeah, yeah. Which is funny because when we were signing the business documents, uh, the person guiding us said, oh, just fill your names out in different spots. You can pick and choose. It doesn't actually matter. Little did I know. I'm it so glad you let my mom mediate for us, too. Well, she did a good job. But, you, you know, if that's what it was, she just ahead. gave me all ownership. She's like, oh, Matt, these don't matter. <laughs> Ryan, choose CEO. <laughs> choose this. Yes. this. She gives you all the good ones. Well, they were. we were told that it actually didn't matter. It, they, like, they, they were all like, it's like, ah, it's whatever. But, like, you do have the, like, you can fire me and I can't fire you. So you do actually hold a lot more power than I do. How much, how easy would it be for me to make that happen like how like it, you putting up a fight how would we how would that be resolved okay well two things i'd put i'd put up a fight if you were trying to fire me but at the same time it's like <laughs> would if we were at that point would i even want to s keep doing this so like why what what would the point be or the, i guess the point at that point would come if cuz i'm like obviously we're not going to keep doing super mega mm -hmm. so at that point it would be fighting for for money yeah over through the company <clears throat> yeah because you know we're 50 50 so i'm like well if you're also we've never signed a contract with each other because i you know we trust each other i trust and you. friends in business always goes well yeah so it's like which we've learned which yeah exactly so we we don't need to worry about that <laughs> so uh yeah i mean if you if you actually did one day just ch choose to fire me say i tried to sneakily do it I think we'd have a, a social network moment. Like, what would happen? Like, I get the locks changed. Ryan! <laughs> I get the locks changed. All of a sudden, you're not getting paid. Like, you stop texting you, me. You try to call our accountant. They're, they're like, I can be your personal accountant, but no longer am I. You're off the company. <laughs> I'd, prob I'm not, I'd probably lose my mind. <laughs> I, I would be furious. <laughs> I, like, I just overnight, I'm like, I get really petty. I'm like, you know what? Hey, can you stop payroll on Matt? He, uh... <laughs> I don't know. He's getting too comfortable at the local playground. I don't know. Say something. <laughs> say something. Just make some shit up so she's like, absolutely. <laughs> like, like, this is a liability otherwise. Uh, yeah, I'd be very mad. You used the R word on stream? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. There are two R words. Yeah, sitting in this room. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was too far. Damn it. Now you have real reason to actually remove me from the company. I fucked up. I'm sorry. We'll be right back. This spring, you need nutritious, convenient meals to energize you for the warmer, active days and keep you on track to reaching your goals. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and tackle everything on your to-do list. Too busy to cook this spring? With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, too. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then, get back outside and soak up the warmer weather. If you're also looking to be a little more calorie conscious, they have options for you too. Try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. With 34 plus chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add-ons, including breakfast items like egg bites, smoothies, and more. It's the great thing about Factor. I'm no longer, you know, wasting time learning a skill like cooking. I can, I can just simply heat it up and the meal's right there ready to go. I can get back to playing video games, to, to, um, 
watching YouTube videos. Yeah, it's great. Head to Factormeals.com slash super50 and use code super50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code super50 at Factormeals.com slash super50 to get 50% off your first box. 50 percent off your first box super 50 when every person moment and penny counts in your business you can't afford to take any of them for granted stamps.com gets it because for the last 25 years they've been helping businesses like yours save time and money so you can focus on your business knowing Stamps.com has all your postage needs covered with premium discounts and great rates. With Stamps.com, all you need is a computer and printer. They even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Running a business isn't cheap, especially when it comes to fulfilling orders for your customers. Luckily, Stamps.com has huge carrier discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. And I should know, because we use it here at Supermega. It makes everything so effective and affordable. It's, 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 it's easy to use and fun. Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code SUPERMEGA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SUPERMEGA. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's right, baby. Uh, that's what I call ad reads. Or uh, a short break. If you're on Patreon and you get the uh, podcast with no ads. And you get it early. Yep. So that's pretty cool. But enough shilling ourselves. Um, I want to talk about something serious. RuneScape? No. I was going to say Yo Mama. <laughs> Well, RuneScape, I mean, I will say. Mm, mm-hmm. I just hit a little update. Combat level 75. I got 60 attack, 60 strength, and 60 defense. <sighs> so, yeah, I can officially use dragon now. Ooh, okay. And Nice. And uh, I've been getting bullied. It's uh, really been hurting my feelings. Um, In-game? Mm-hmm. Online? In-game. Or... Okay. Because, let me tell you something. It's a little place called Fossil Island. And to get there, you have to do a quest. And to do the quest, you have to complete uh, this other kind of long challenge. I did it. I get there because it's the best training spot in the game. But, you know, the monster spawn points, there's mm-hmm. always people there doing the same thing. So when, when, I, when I find one that's empty, I'll switch worlds until I find one that's empty. And I'm like, yeah. And I guess it's like etiquette. You know, if someone is already there in one of those spots, don't come up and attack the same monster. Unless you're stronger than them. Then exactly. you kill them. Well, then, uh, you know, these higher level players will come up to me and just tell me to fuck off. Are they just like, fuck off? Mm-hmm. Really? This guy comes up and just goes, fuck off. <clears throat> uh, when I had had the spot for like 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, and I'm damn. Like, and I was like, no. And he's like, all right, and started killing all the monsters before I could. And he's like, you're just hurting your own XP at this point. He's like, did you do anything? And then he was like, he was like, bro, find another world. And I was like, you why can, don't you find that's one? That's what I said. I was like, are you not capable of doing the same thing? And he said, no. He just told me to fuck off again. Fuck off. So I just, so I left and he thought he won. Then I came back. Started just, not even to gain some XP. I started just attacking the same monsters. Every time he'd attack a monster, I'd hit it too. Got his ass. Ooh, did, were you stealing XP from him? Uh, it was just annoying, yeah. Oh. Because okay. I would be hitting, I'd be taking health off. He's like, seriously, fuck off. He just disappeared after a while. Another time, uh, someone came up to me when I was training, and they were much more polite, and they said, hey, I'll give you 100k gold if you find another spot. And I said, okay. Really? Yeah. That sounds perfect. I like that more than fuck off. Well, then another time, I accident, I ran up to an area, and I was playing on my phone, so I wasn't really, I was watching TV, and I accidentally, uh, one of the monsters attacked me. Mm. So I automatically started fighting back. And the guy said something really mean to me. I don't remember what it was. It was along the lines of fuck off. And I was like, wow, that was unnecessary. So I just kept attacking the monster. I was being a little troll. Oh, yeah. And he goes, 
bot or just brain dead? Ooh. So you kept attacking? So I said, neither. Full of swag. <laughs> Full of swag. And he, uh, His response? He said, can you please find another spot? So okay, said, so he okay. said, please. So then I backed off. But his initial response was akin to fuck off. I don't remember what it yeah. was. So, yeah, but I've been having a, you know, it is the best spot in the game pretty much for for training your levels, for your attack levels, and, and just, I'm very, uh, it's hard to find it empty. That's so, so. And would it take you like a good 30 minutes to even level up now since you're so high leveled? With that, it's, it's taking me closest to an hour just to get one level up. Damn. I know. Yeah. Hey, the 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 cost of brilliance is high. It's incredibly high. But I, I don't get how some of these guys have these maxed out levels because the gap between level 98 and 99 is the same as like 1 to 77. Well, you have to think about like how people obsess over games. Like I know you're obsessed, but there are people who are not not playing the game. You know what I mean? It's their life. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's their wow. It's their happiness. I tried to get into wow. I had fun for a little bit, and then I just kind of backed off. I feel like it's one of those games where if you weren't in it at the start, maybe you didn't. I don't know. I've always wanted to get into wow. It seems a little a little complex. It's fine. I mean, like, I had Ross helping me, and so that was that was nice. And then there there were other people that came and, you know, helped, helped me out, gave me some items. I I would like to. I've never tried. I feel like I'd like it, but... Oh, WoW's also one of those things where I feel like I, I don't know, I might get a little addicted to it. Yeah, you, uh, <clears throat> it is addicting. It is, it is RuneScape on crack, I guess, essentially. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just played a bunch to, back years ago, just to unlock a certain class, and then after I did, I just stopped playing altogether. I remember your WoW phase, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot everything, I, I, my, I mean, my character's still there, he still exists. I wish I had gotten into it when you did. So I could play it with you. Because now it's like another thing is if I don't have anyone to play with. And now you're so overleveled that it's like you'd just be babysitting me. Exactly. And I'm not going to fucking. I mean, I, I, I'm i playing my own games. I just replayed Resident Evil 5 and beat it this morning. I know. I You know, it's it was like. great. <sighs> the, uh, the AI for, because uh, you've watched me play Resident Evil 2 and some of 3. And you're watching me play 4 right now. Spoiler alert for the next series coming out on the channel. But it's a bit different because it's Resident Evil 5 is meant to be a co-op game. And so when played single player, that co-op partner is then given to AI. Oh, and it's not very good? Uh, I'll, be run, I'll be doing a boss fight, and some of the bosses or mini bosses have, like, one-shot kills. Like a guy with a chainsaw, if he gets near you and swings and hits you, you're dead. You're just instantly dead. So I'll be running, and the computer will get, like, stuck on a pillar for, like, a brief second, which gives it just enough time to die. So there are several times where... If the AI dies, you die too? Mm-hmm. You, to, <laughs> you have to restart from a checkpoint. That sucks. Man, I hope they, I hope they, do, the, I hope they do a remake. A lot of people don't want 5 to have a remake. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me help you out there. A lot of woke assholes don't yeah. want them to do a remake, Ryan. Yeah. All I'm saying is Resident Evil 5, as much as people hate it, best-selling Resident Evil game. So let's... Let's uh, let's would? hop off the high horse. I don't know if it's been if it's done better than any of the remakes, though. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't know if they want to touch that one. I feel like they they will because they're gonna have to change a lot. <laughs> the they can they they'd have to change one specific section in general, which would be I think the marshlands section where you're going around in a boat and there's uh some huts and villages, um. The game takes place in Africa, so as you can imagine, um, when you go to the marshlands in Africa and there are huts and villages, uh, the types of people you will the see. The character design yeah. is a little, uh, a little out there. Their state of dress slash undress. It's just, uh, they're going to have to tweak it a little bit. Jim... I don't know why. I'm sorry, Luke. I did don't or don't, or don't, Jim could do an edit here. <clears throat> yeah, Jim. Jim. I don't trust Jim with. with the edit. Oh, especially on this subject matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those uh, wondering, it's like how how bad could it be? Or I didn't play Resident Evil. Oh, let me guess. It's just Luke. Remember that image I sent to the group text that without any context. <laughs> That probably just looked uh, racist from the oh, start. Oh, Ryan sending another racist image to the group text. <laughs> Again, uh, throw up that picture. That's that's the enemy type that 
that that I'm mainly talking about. That Can, one right there. May, maybe maybe Luke, when you throw it up, you should get rid of our camera as well, so it's not so people can't grab a screen grab of just the picture in the middle of the two and of an us. And an arrow that says this is from the Resident Evil Five game. Yeah. Yes. And also then uh, like make sure on the picture you put this is an example. Uh, and then just put the word like offensive or like this is very offensive. Or could be, could be seen as offensive. There, yeah, that's good. You know, give give us a little wiggle room to play the middle a bit. But I, it's still my favorite Resident Evil game. I haven't played one, but I've played now two, some of three. I've never played four. I'm having fun with four. I like four a lot. Four is really fun. Five is just a different beast. It's uh, just a fun little action game. Four is tied with two for me right now, honestly. Yeah. I think there's a there's just a a a lot of the camp factors why I love Resident Evil. And that's why Resident Evil Five just kicks it up a notch. And they've toned down the camp a little bit in the Resident Evil Four remake, but mm-hmm. camp's always been a part of the Resident Evil games, which I appreciate. Um with two I just really liked Mr. X. Mr. X, he just looked like a buff Rorschach from the Watchmen. <laughs> Every Resident Evil game that we've played so far, they is it they have a, a thing? big scary. Does person. every Resident Evil game have a big scary person? I never played the first one, so the second one is Mister X. The third, third one, one is, has Nemesis or whatever the fuck that thing yeah. is with the rocket launcher. He was cool as fuck. Four, we haven't come across any big stalking person yet. But we have come across big a, a dude that could be, but he hasn't. We haven't had any stalker enemy like uh, the the enemy type. Is just a big invincible enemy that is always walking towards the the plot of it follows in a game character. Yeah, well, which the plot of it follows for those who don't know, there's an entity always walking towards you. I love that word. No matter what entity, entity, yeah, mm. entity. It's fun to say, and it's it it has just a very spooky vibe. You know, the vibes the vibes are spooky. And I will end entity. it with this. You know. The last, I think the Resident Evil 3 remake came out in 2020, it's 2023, Resident Evil 4 remake just came out on the heels, or, yeah, on the heels of, a uh, Village. Of, of Village, and so, you know, Resident Evil 9 is probably next, and then after that, hopefully, Resident Evil 5 remake, because it's a, it's meant to be a co-op game, and I think, a little, we've had fun, you know, I've I've been mostly playing the Resident Evil games, you've been picking it up whenever you get handed the controller and or fu- you know doing not, a great job too yeah when you don't know the controls uh and you haven't been going through all the tutorials that lead you up to the intense you know but that a game is you're practicing just to you know it, it sets, gives you a little events to practice skills that you eventually get better at uh, because you recognize the patterns matt doesn't have that because he he just watches and like watching you can watch and kind of get Get it? But it's not the same as that muscle memory that you're getting over there with exactly. the controller. But when if if five comes out with a remake, which I hope to God they do, we're going to do it co-op. We have to. Yeah, we will. Unless That'll they take fun. co-op out because people are upset with it for some reason. But I bet I bet it's fantastic, dude. I bet it's I bet it's fun as hell. Um, they could just make a lot of quality of life improvements that they've been doing with like all the past games. One being taking out tank controls would be great. That just means. Um, you can freely walk while aiming because in Resident Evil Five right now you're just stationary and you have to stay there to shoot and you to can't like, walk and shoot and to run around you have to like hold down the X button to like run around and to, it's weird. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that, dude. It it's it's a it's not like archaic, but it uh it definitely makes for some. Annoying circumstances when you when you're stuck in a spot and can't really turn. I mean, there's a quick turn button, but you can only move so fast. And Chris is a big dude. Chris, the main character, of Resident Evil Five, Chris Redfield, I believe, he has big old muscles. Chris Raygun. No, <laughs> he doesn't look like Chris. He does Ray have Gun. big muscles, though. He does, just like Chris Raygun. Uh, you know, I'm starting to think my mom might be. Coming a bit of a uh, gamer fat game. ass. Uh, whoa, she listens, Ryan, to yeah. every week. I was just you. Your lips looked like it was forming 
gamer. Because you've been talking about that she's been eating like an unhealthy amount recently. Luke. And that L- you're worried. Yeah, I think my mom's becoming a bit of a gamer. Um, mm. She watched my sister play through uh, Village. Ooh. And she said it was scary. And then my mom just watched The Last of Us. Watched just a playthrough on YouTube? No, the show. Oh. No. <laughs> she okay. watched a Let's Play of The Last of Us, the whole I mean, thing. you go from her watching yeah. a game to... No, she watched uh, the, the Last of Us show. She said it was the scariest thing she's ever seen. What? You don't agree? Your mom's been alive fucking 80 years, and that's the scariest <laughs> thing she's Dude. ever seen. Dude, <laughs> play off her, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're gonna hurt her feelings. I'm sorry. She knows I love her. Yeah, she does. She knows I'm only saying I'm like I'm like a little kid throwing pebbles at a play on a playground. Sorry. At a playground. Uh, at, or at a playground. You could be standing next to the playground throwing them at the ground on the playground. But, I'm, you know? but in this I would be throwing them at a at a girl. Like a girl you got a crush on? Yeah. And I am also um elementary school aged in this <laughs> Just to set this, this the universe, you know. Who's this fucking thirty year old throwing rocks at kids, elementary school kids on the playground? We should do that for a vlog. We should do a vlog where we just do just heinous things. We, tr- I, uh, I don't know why I had this idea of like, could I pull it off? This is this is an intrusive thought. The dress you wore, yeah, you can pull it off. No, thank you. Uh, I had this idea, and it's not something I'm gonna do or something I, I would never do. The idea centered around a heist that I set up for myself, an easy heist. It's kind of, what I'm about to describe to you is kind of like what a criminal, a starting criminal would think. It was like, uh, you know, just okay. a thought. My thought would be like, could I do this without you like figuring it out? I would find your wallet during the workday, take out your card, go down, buy some snacks, put it back in your wallet, and just that's it. I would just go, use your card, buy some snacks for myself or a meal, and come back, put it back in your wallet. Could I get away with it? Could I get away with one of the most least intense heists ever? I think I could. Oh, definitely, dude. I mean, you and I are notorious for checking our bank account activity (laughs) frequently, so... Uh, yeah, I think you could easily get away with that. You and I leave our wallets around, like, I lose all my shit all the time. Yeah, dude. Well, I just actually switched to a wallet, because I had a phone case that I was keeping all my cards in lately, and I said, you know what, I'm not some fucking boomer, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I I don't like this, I'm gonna switch over to, well, my cards, the real reason I switched my cards are falling out. So, uh, I got, I switched back to my old wallet, and I can't get used to it. So I'm leaving it around everywhere, so it'd be very easy for you just to take my card, honestly, what you could do is you could just take it out. I get home. I go, oh, fuck. I must have forgot to put my card back in. Um, you could go on like a two-day shopping spree, and I wouldn't fucking notice. Okay. And then just a uh, few days later at the office, just like kind of like put it maybe like under the table on the carpet. So I'm like, oh, shit. I must have dropped it the other day. <laughs> and I probably would never notice. Yeah, I just throw it on the ground. Yeah, easy. Because you would never think that your friend Ryan would. I would never imagine that a friend of mine would steal money from me. So it's like going th- through those lengths. Too. Yeah, exactly. So it's like that that that's the type of thing that I just wouldn't ever guess. So yeah, you could do it. What about the opposite? Yeah, easily. Now what if you and I co conspire and do it to Justin? Oh yeah. You Matt's loaded too, man. We can Matt, man. the I'm gonna be honest. Our employees at the office are very lucky, you and I don't try to do pranks together most all usually any time why not we don't we don't we don't use i why, feel like if why you, don't and I, you and i start doing some pranks because i feel i feel like our pranks i feel like we would think too much into it where it would be like this weird truman show esque thing <laughs> for someone else to experience but it would be so funny to watch i think that you and i i think it, it it's it's a good you know some companies you know, the the higher-ups go on, like, business retreats to learn about leadership together. Yeah. To, to grow stronger bonds. I think a way for us to grow our, our, our brotherhood in, in, in running a business is pulling pranks on our employees. Maybe take some prank classes at our <laughs> local community center. <laughs> Teach you, like, whoopee cushion 101. <laughs> I mean, it's at a community center. They just give people space to teach whatever they want, huh? Could you th- do you think if we went to the uh, community center and asked if we could we could do our own class they'd let us? Pr- pranking 101? Well, it depends, right? If it if it's a uh... 
They have to vet it, obviously, I'm sure. They'd have to vet it, and they'd also have to... I think that since it's a like a local government-owned thing, it would probably have to be sanctioned. It would probably have to... There would have to be taxpayer dollars given specifically to our, the, the class. Why don't we just teach people... I'll do it for free. How about we teach people how to be late? And people will always show up on time, but you and I should show up late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first class meets at seven, seven on the dot. <laughs> we walk through the doors at like seven thirteen. <laughs> well, <sighs> looks like uh, you all failed your first pop quiz. I mean, I mean, that's the end of that class. Like, all right, see you tomorrow at seven. Remember, don't forget tomorrow we're meeting a little earlier at six forty-five. <laughs> we show up at seven thirteen again. Ooh, <laughs> again, every one of you failed. And then, like, if someone does actually show up late, we were just like, "Yes, <laughs> yes." I was gonna say no. We just we just reprimand them all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> what do you think? You think you're gonna get a job being late like this? <laughs> sure, being being like, sure you're on time most of the time, but that one time you're late is what counts. Welcome to the class, guys. We're the Tardy Brothers, and we're gonna be uh teaching you a little bit about how to be tardy. Change the spelling of that. That's another type of class. Hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I do wonder, though. Learn to be. <laughs> the letters are there. Tardy brothers. You can rearrange them. Yep. Uh, but I will say, I wonder how hard it would be to get our own class. We Especially probably have a we... better shot at doing, uh, what's that fucking thing called? Master class. I like the online and they've sponsored us before. I don't know if they still sponsor us. I'm not saying anything negative. No, I know. Uh, well, I don't know, dude. They had fucking Bill Clinton do one on, on diverse diversity and leadership. So it's like, I don't know if, if, you know, they've had Bill Clinton. I don't know if they're going to have us. They had Hans Zimmer. Love Hans. I do. He makes great scores. Apparently Hans Zimmer's son is a, is a meghead. I found that out through the grapevine. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. You know, maybe Hans Zimmer can write the score for our podcast. Get another migraine. Oh, I thought you were doing some like doctor. Probably because I didn't get any sleep. Yeah, how many I hours? I woke of up from a migraine. How many hours of sleep you get? I got about two hours of sleep. So that's what I'm running on. I drank a Red Bull, had this, and I had some peanut butter toast and a protein shake. I commend you for coming in, dude. Because honestly. If I if I end up getting two hours of sleep, I'm just gonna I'm texting the group and I'm like, not today. I forget sometimes that I could just like I could just be like, yo, I don't know why I'd start up. Yo, ha- it sounds <clears throat> cool. Hey yo, maybe. Hey yo It's more fitting for my 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 ah, But yeah, but if you're if you're trying to sell the fact that you have a migraine, hey yo doesn't really scream that. Probably like, hey, only got two hours of sleep. Sorry guys, can't come in. No one's gonna be upset with me. You know, you and I, too, if, if we're just coming to record, we can always be like, you want to meet at, like, 7, just do a nighttime recording? Yeah. No traffic on the way get home. get some Excedrin. You going to get some Excedrin? Yeah. Well, guys, Ryan's going to go pop a couple Excedrin, which is going to make the Super Mega Cast After Hours segment extra, extra lit and funny. Uh, so if you go to our Patreon right now, you can uh, you can see the, the After Hours segment. So thank you guys for watching. <laughs> we love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just gave people like a screenshot to do of like if I ever admit an argument with someone on Twitter, they could like post a screenshot, and be like, "This you, yeah, an argument coming from a guy like this." I did a funny little pose. Yeah, you did. Did uh, you see it? I did. Should I give everyone one for me? Yeah. How's that? Open your mouth a little more. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. All right, yeah. Maybe you- those should be the thumbnail shots. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Luke, you put them together in Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we can just call the episode "This You." Yeah, and uh, for those who are going, this episode was too short. I wish there was more podcast for me to listen to. There is, uh, there is more podcast for you uh, to listen to over on our Patreon. It's five dollars a month. You pay for that, and you get not just uh, the after show, which is an extended uh, segment of this podcast. You also get a new show that we just created specifically for the Patreon called Uncle Sleepover, which are which is a riff tracks on movies. It's very 
uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 esque. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, it's just it's just riff tracks. It's fun. You just watch, also... you watch a movie with us and you and you listen to our great. It's like you're watching a movie with your with your uncles Matt and Ryan. Exactly. There's also other behind the scenes stuff. Uh, monthly Q and A, typically, usually a monthly Q and A, um, and uh, Matt's mixtapes. I want people on the Ryan mixtape. One recently too. came out, new Matt mixtape. Yeah, it's fun, and uh, we got we got lots of bonus stuff on there. There's a there's a huge backlog, so so go check it out. We appreciate the support. We've been getting demonetized a lot lately, so yeah. appreciate it. Love you guys, and we will see you next week. Man, it's always a slam dunk when I see Ryan and Matt. Love you guys. 